Good morning. Welcome to Christ the Ark Church. Stay tuned and enjoy the service with us.
through it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is time to give in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm not even going to take long. I just want to pray for those that are saying, I am a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. I am a generous giver. May we pray that God will enable us. Hallelujah. The song was saying that uh, Jesus was given unto us as a sacrifice. He was given unto us as a sacrifice. A living sacrifice for all our sins. That it may be wiped away. Hallelujah. When we give a sacrificial gift, we are acknowledging, we are doing what the Father did. We are doing what the Father has taught us to do. Hallelujah. To give generously. To give without reproach. To give with a heart that says, Lord, this is for you. I am giving it to you. The pastor minister this morning that we need to do what we do, not for ourselves, but for the poor. Hallelujah. For those that need the weight, we go out there and minister the word of God unto their lives. So, I'm going to just read the, the familiar script, scripture in the book of Malachi. Chapter 3, verse 10, it reads as follows. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be room enough to store it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has put this test on us as his servants, as the children of the kingdom, to say, test me in this. When you bring all your tithe, when you bring all your offerings unto, into the house, test me in this. So the test is left upon ourselves to determine which is a good measure, to determine which is a good giving in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we come and give our best? Can we come and give with cheerful hearts? Hallelujah. Lord, Father God, I pray that, Lord, for those that bring generous gifts into your house, bless them, Almighty God. Bless them like your word says in Malachi, Almighty God, that they may not have room enough to store it. Bless them that they may become blessing to others. Give them abundance, Almighty God, of every desire of their hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, because all good gifts come from the Lord. You are the blesser of men. You are the Lord who blesses us when we go in and we go out. Father God, we are coming before your throne of grace and pray, Almighty Counselor, that you are the exceedingly abundantly God. We serve a mighty God and we know that and we will do just like you have instructed in a way, because we are here to test you in this and more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Mr. Ophari, Asha will be coming to the fore. Yes, I want to pray before we go and Asha the pastor to the fore. I just had this scripture laid in my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. It is similar to what the pastor was sharing in the morning. Hallelujah. It is from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 16. It reads as follows in the NIV version. It says, Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Hallelujah. We serve the mighty God, hallelujah. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Hallelujah. The verse 17 says, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I 
our Jesus is a generous giver. Hallelujah. He gives us all things. He gives us in abundance. Praise upon praise that has already been given. Therefore, when he pour out his heart, his life unto us, that we could also pour out to others. Hallelujah. When Jesus pour out into our lives, he pours it out that we may also pour it out to the next person. Hallelujah. He wants us to overflow. He wants us to overflow in everything that he gives us. Hallelujah. The word of God says that Jesus, he describes the relationships that we have as the vine and the branch. The life that flows in the vine is the life that flows through the branch. So it matters where you position yourself to receive this grace, to do more, to receive this grace, to exceed the things that we can do naturally. The pastor was sharing about the Holy Spirit, the feeling of the Holy Spirit. We need the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And the, the, the word here is reminding us that if we remain connected to the true vine, we are the branches. For the branches to get water, it needs to start from the roots. So we need to learn to position ourselves right for us to bear the gifts, the grace, the love that has already been given. We need to position ourselves right. You cannot be uprooted from the Father, from Jesus, and expect to still receive that which others are receiving. What are remain connected? Can we remain connected? Can we pray that Father God, we want to remain connected with you? Can we see bondage? May we pray that God. Lose him, lose him up. May the chains that are binding him to the things of darkness, may they be broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I don't know if you have relatives that are sick. I don't know if you have relatives that are going through. This is the time where we come together as a church and say, Lord, we want you to move in this place. We want you to release that needs to be released. Hallelujah. Can we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we are surrendering all these people that we have mentioned before your throne of grace. Your throne of grace, mighty God. You said in your way, the mighty God, that grace has already been given unto us. So for us to receive even more grace, we need to remain connected to the true one. Father God, we are praying here. Upon Mrs. Rufu, our true mighty God, we are praying here. Upon Ronnie Omo Venda, we are praying here. Upon the child of Max Carol, we are praying here.
apocalypses. Revelation is revealed. So to reveal is apocalypto in Greek. Revelation it is to make the secret known. To reveal it is to take the cover off. So after there was a revelation, the Bible says Jesus said to Peter, this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood, but this was revealed to you by my Father in heaven. He said, no human being has revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. And he says, you will no longer be called Simon, but you will be called Peter. So, now it means after revelation, Jesus reveals where does revelation come from. Revelation comes from God in heaven. He says, you will no longer be called Simon, but Peter. What does that signify to us? It signifies that it is the only time that Simon was able to know who he is. Yeah. Because before revelation, he did not know who he was. That's why he was unreliable. That's why he was, you, can know, you could not depend on Simon because he was a reed. But the moment there was a revelation, oh, somebody knew that I am actually Peter. So family, you need revelation to know who you really are. Amen. If you know who you are, you will know where you are going. But if you don't know who you are, you will never know where you are going. If you know who you are, you will know what to do. But if you don't know who you are, you will never know what you are supposed to do. Yeah. If you know who you are, family, you will live a stressless, stressless life. But if you don't know who you are, you will live a stressful life. So the moment there is a revelation, family, you need to know it is the beginning of great things. Amen. Oh, if you need to experience great things in your life, you need to have revelation. The moment you have revelation, it is the beginning of great things. Nothing and no one will stop you. The moment you have revelation. Amen. The moment you have revelation, no one can convince you otherwise. But you will hold on to what was revealed to you. Amen. The moment you have revelation, others will think maybe you are a bit crazy. But it is revelation that is driving you. Hallelujah. Amen. So the moment there is revelation, family, you know it is the beginning of great things in your life. Mm -hmm. And in the past eight messages, family, we have been ministering under a topic that says, God will make it happen. This whole week I was praying to find a new exciting topic. I thought when I will begin to, to, to prepare my message, the Holy Spirit will give me a different topic. I said, God will make it happen. Amen. <laughs> Come we are stuck on God will make it happen. And let me tell you, the Bible is just here to show you that by the testimony of two or three, the truth will be established. Yeah. Now we have more than two or three testimonies that God will make it happen. So if there is more than two or three witnesses, then we can preach on the message. Because the truth is established where there is two or three witnesses. So we have more than two or three witnesses. Every week for the past eight messages, we have been sharing at least two verses. So it is eight times two, 16 witnesses that God will make it happen. So family, I want you to know that a person can only be convicted in court if there is a witness to what has happened. Yeah. So it means that if God is able to give us more than two witnesses on what has happened, God will make it happen. Amen. God will make it happen. Why? Because the truth has been established. Once the truth is established, we have authorization to preach about the message. Because the message is a witness. Hallelujah. So family, this morning, I want to encourage you that God will make it happen. God will make it happen. God will make it happen. Let 
me tell you, family, when I talk about this topic, there are things that they have not even begun to happen in your life. Yeah. <laughs> there are things that when, when, when you're sitting down and you are just thinking on your own, it's like it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I've got good news for you this morning. God will make it happen. Mm -hmm. There are things that you have not even seen happening in your life. Yeah. But I want to tell you that God will make it happen. Since you were born, when you look at all the resources that you have, it seems like it's not going to happen. I want to tell you this morning that God will make it happen. Father, I want you to know that your sense of smell, it cannot even smell that this thing is because you know when someone is blind. You will just go by the spell that yeah. there is price of yeah. But now, this thing that you are looking forward to, you don't even smell it. It does not mean that God will not make it happen. God will make it happen. You might not even have heard that this has never happened in your whole family since all the generations that came before you. But I want to tell you this morning that God will make it happen. Family, you have not even touched it with your hands yeah. or even with your body, just passing through it. Mm -hmm. huh? You have not touched it. But I want to tell you that it does not mean that it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, God will make it happen. Amen. God will make it happen. Even when you have not tasted it, you know there are some things for you to know them. You need to taste them with your tongue. It seems like, you, family, you don't even have an idea how this thing tastes like. But I want to tell you this morning that God will make it happen. Why am I saying all this? I want you to know that what God will make happen is way beyond all your senses. Yeah. God will make it happen. You need to dissect this. You need to spiritually search this. Because God will make it happen. So the past two weeks we ministered and said the small women will become a thousand people and a tiny group will become a powerful nation. When God said this through Isaiah, it seemed like it's not going to happen. But I want to tell you that God will make it happen because when God has said it, it is just going to happen. God will make it Heaven. God says at the right time, I the Lord will make it happen. God says, I will make it happen. I love that passage of scripture which we said the other week in Isaiah 55, where the Bible says, So shall my way. It will not return to be empty handed, but it will do the things that I want to happen. It will make happen the things that I want to happen. This is God declaring to you that God will make it happen. We said at the right time, God will make it happen. God will make it happen. But at the right time, the Bible says that God has set the right time for everything. He has given us the desire to know about the future, but he never gives us the satisfaction of fully understanding what he is doing. But that does not mean that God is not doing anything. So I have got good news for you this morning, family. God will make it Heaven. So our topic today says God will make it happen. Part number nine. We will get our passage of scripture from the book of Job chapter 23. I will read verse number 13 to verse number 14. Let's read in Romans. Romans says, but he is unchangeable. Who can oppose him? He does what he desires. He will certainly accomplish what he has decreed for me. And he has many more things like this in mind. Let's pray for the way. Father, we thank you for your word. It's forever settled in heaven. You lifted your word above all your name. Your word is not theory, but your word is practical. Father, we want to thank you that whoever comes to you must believe that you are God. Father, and you reward those who diligently seek you. Yeah. Father, I pray today and make a commitment that we will not reduce your word. We will not change your word. We will not subtract from your word. We will not dilute your word to suit our own needs. But Father, we will explain 
said your word in a way that it still retains its integrity. Because your word is supreme. Your word is without error. Your word is absolute authority. Father, we want to thank you that as we minister your word, your word enters every heart, faith rise, your children walk on water, move mountains, and do the impossible. Father, I publicly announce that I will not minister in my limited human abilities. I will allow the mighty, awesome, powerful Holy Spirit to minister through me this morning. Father, after all is said and done, you will receive all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, the Bible says in Good News Translation, the same passage, He never changes. No one can oppose Him or stop Him from doing what He wants to do. He will fulfill what He has planned for me. The plan is just one of many plans that God has. So, family, the Bible says that God never changes. And no one can oppose him. It does not matter how powerful they can be. No one can oppose God. It says, oh, stop him from doing what he wants to do. Yeah. That's why I'm so convinced that God will make it happen. Why? Because God has made it happen before. God will still make it happen today. God will still make it happen in the future. The Bible says that no one can stop God. It does not even matter even if we can go to lockdown level 5. It will never stop God. It does not matter which union has gathered, maybe the United Nations, which are going throughout the whole world, no matter how powerful they can be, but they cannot stop God. Because the Bible says no one can oppose God, yeah. and no one can stop God from doing what God wants to do. The Bible says he will fulfill what he has planned for me. He will fulfill what he has planned for you. Yeah. That plan is just one of many plans that he has for your life. Eh? God will fulfill the plan that he has for you. And that plan is just one of many more plans that he has for your life. So God is not going to change because another plan in your life, it seems like it is a bit difficult. It seems like no one has ever experienced before. God will not change because of the location where the plan must take place. Yeah. God never changes. It does not matter what qualification you have or age that you are. God never changes. His plan for your life will still be fulfilled. And that is only one of the many plans that he has for your life. So in all the plans that God has for your life, there is no plan that is going to cause God to change. Let me tell you, it does not matter how cold it may be or how dark. It does not matter what is the economic condition. That will not change God's plan for your life. God is still going to fulfill the plan that he has for your life. And that is just one of many more plans that he has for you in all those plans. God will never be scared of the situation that you are coming across. God will never get to a point of saying that how oh, this situation is so difficult. Why did you decide to come across this situation? That same situation, if it is still in part of the plans that God has in your life, God will still make it happen. Amen. No one can oppose him. Nothing can stop God from doing what God wants to do. God will make it happen. Family, I want to tell you that this passage of scripture, Job, is publicly declaring that this God never changes. Let me tell you, Job has gone through the worst that a human being can go through. But even after he went through what he went through, Job was still able to maintain his loyalty to God and say, God never changes. Remember, Job was so blessed. He was the richest man in the East. And Job got to a point where he lost everything. Even after he lost everything, Job still says God never changes. Can you imagine? When you have something, and when you receive it, you will say, Lord, I praise you, and I thank you for giving me this thing. That very same thing, you get to a point where you lose it. After you lost it, then you still go and say, Oh, God, you do not change. 
This is the loyalty that Job had towards his God. He publicly says that God never changes. So, family, I've got good news for you this morning. I want you to know that God never changes. God does not change. There is no situation in your life that will ever cause God to change. There is no amount of difficulty in your life that will ever cause God to change. God never changes. The word never, it means that at no time in the past, in the present, or in the future will God ever change. That is the word never. It means in the past, God never changed. It means presently, God will not change. It means in the future, God will not change. The word never means not at all. God will never change. Not at all. Amen. It means no way. There is no way that God will ever change. Yeah. Huh? Family, I want to tell you that sometimes, look, when you are going through, maybe it is raining and the rivers are overflowing. You know the Henops River, it is the most popular river in St. Children. When it is raining, you need to change the route that you have always used. Yeah. So why are you changing? Because there is a difficulty on the road. You cannot cross the Henops River when it is overflowing. Yeah. Now, with God, there is no way that God will ever change. Even if the Herbs River is overflowing, God will not change his way. He will make a way right there in the Herbs River. Amen. <laughs> so God never changes. There is no way that God will ever change. Under no circumstance will God ever change. Do you know, family, that sometimes when it is too cold, we can make an appointment, but because of the cold, we can decide to change. Why? Because there is a circumstance. Huh? Sometimes there are things that we want to do, but because the bank account does not allow us to do them, what will we do? We will change because of circumstances. When we come across circumstances, we change. That is human nature. Due to circumstances, human nature changes. When circumstances change, human nature adapts to those circumstances. Yeah. But with God, under no circumstances will God ever change. Yeah. It does not matter how poor the family that you were born in. God will not say, I will not work with you because you have been born with a, from a family that has so much circumstances. No. No, with God, under no circumstances will God change. God will still use you. It does not matter what qualification you have. It does not matter the color of your skin. It does not matter who you know or you do not know. God can still use you. So under no circumstances will God change. Let me tell you something. Job was the richest man in the East. But overnight, Job became the poorest man in the East. Even after Job lost everything, Job still says, under no circumstances will God change. That's why the Bible says that God, his gifts are irrevocable. Yeah. Right? Even when you read the book, the Bible in Philippians chapter 1, it tells you that all perfect gifts and good gifts they are from the Lord, the Father of light in heaven, with whom there is no shadow of telling. What does that mean? It means that with whom that there is no change. God does not change. That is what Job is saying here. He is saying, he has given me everything. After I have lost everything, it does not mean that God has changed. So God, Job is teaching us through the extremes of life that God will not change. After God has given you, God will not take away. What am I teaching you this morning? I am teaching you that even after God has given you something, God will never come and take it. Yeah. The things that God has given Job, it is not God who took them. No, God, Satan said, take away everything that he has. And you will see that this man will not remain being faithful to you. Then God says, okay, go and do it, but don't touch this man's soul. So God did not take all the wealth that he gave Job. Satan went and he did the storm that killed all the animals, the, the camels, the donkeys that he had, the, the cattle, the sheep. 
The things that Job lost, Satan is the one who took them away from God. Job goes and says, God does not change. Because he knows that God will never change. After he has given you something, he will never take it away. Let me tell you the statement where Job went and said after he lost everything, and said, God has given and now he has taken. That statement is not the statement of truth. No, it was truly recorded. But it is not God who has done that. <laughs> it is truly stated, but it's not the statement of truth. It was because of what Job was going through. So many times when we go through things, we begin to say things and align them to God when God is not part of that equation. So Satan is the one who took everything that God has given to Job. It is still Satan after Job did not change because he lost everything. He went again to God and said, Lord, you think I do not know why Job fears you so much? And he says, I know that you have settled him with three hedges. You have settled him, you settled his family, you have settled everything that he has. Take these circles away, take the hedges away, take the protection away. After you took the protection, you will see that this man will curse you. Then Satan went and did what? After God removed the head, God said, but do not touch this life. Then Satan went and he did what? He struck Job with sickness. He struck him with the source from the head to the soles of his feet. But listen to me. This is the same man who was living a healthy life. And even when he, his body was so painful, Job still says, God does not change. God does not change. It does not matter what you go through in life. Never sit one day and say, God has changed. God does not change. God remains the same. So under no circumstances will God decide to change. Hallelujah. Amen. So family, I want you to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. He is the same. Yeah. Yesterday, today, and forever. God does not change. God's master plan of redemption of the human race still stands. God will not change because we are trying to go as far away from him as much as we can. God's plan of redemption for the human race still stands. It does not matter how the human race responds to God's invitation. God's plan for redemption of the human race still stands. It will not change because the human race is not responding as God expects the human race to respond to his invitation for redemption. So remember the story of Job, it is a perfect story of redemption. Eh? Job lost everything. Job lost everything. Now family, what I am excited about when I was going through the story of Job, I came to realize that Job did not serve God because he was rich. Eh? If God, Job served God because he was rich, the moment that Job lost everything, Job will have turned from serving God. Yeah. So Job served God even when he was rich. Eh? So Job served God even when he was rich. Now, when he lost everything, Job was con continued to be loyal to God. This shows me that God, Job did not serve because God has blessed him. No, he served even when God blessed him. That is how we need to serve God. We don't serve God because God has given us something. No, we serve him even when he has given us something. Because even when we lose something, then we are still going to be loyal to God. This is the life of Job. Job never changed his faith towards God because of what he was going through. Yeah. Because of what he was. He actually never served God because God has given him everything yeah. that he had. Yeah. He served God even when he had everything. When he lost everything, he still remained loyal to God. So, family, I want you to know that Job served even when he was rich. Even when he lost everything, he 
still remain loyal to God. So family, even when he lost everything and he was sick in his body, he still said that he had so much faith in God and that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for his life. You see family, this comes with loyalty. If you are not loyal, the moment that something happens, you will not be anywhere to be found. But if Job lost his loyalty towards God, the moment he lost everything, Job will have continued and said, I, I don't think that God is still going to make it happen. <laughs> I don't think that God will still fulfill the plans that he has for my life. If after I have accumulated so much wealth, then instantly I lose everything, I don't think that the plan will still work. But when I want you to know that God wants to make it happen beyond all your senses. Because if he dies it within our senses, we should have done it for ourselves in the first place. But because God wants to blow away all our senses, God will do it in a way that we will not even understand how does God actually work. Because he says that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for my life. And that is just one of many plans that God has for me. After you have lost everything, do you still say that? That is a sign of the extreme of loyalty. Yeah. The loyalty to God was so extreme that even after he lost everything, family, Job remained loyal to God. He demonstrated his confidence in God and says, the way that my God is powerful, no one can oppose him and no one can stop him from doing what God wants to do. That is the sign of loyalty that I have learned from Job. Job still says, God will make it happen after you lost everything. Eh? When you do not have what you want, and you still say, God will make it happen. When you are not where you want to see yourself, and you still say, God will make it happen. Job shows that he never depended on the things that God has given him. Eh? Job showed us, even through this passage of scripture, that he never depended on the things that God has given him, but he depended on God himself. <laughs> because the moment we depend on the things that God has given us, the moment that those things are no more there, we will no longer depend on God. So Job depended on God even when he had everything. Even when he loses everything, Job still says, my God is powerful. Job still says God will make it happen when he no longer has anything. So Job shows that he never depended on what? On his wealth. Hallelujah. So family, what is this teaching us? This is teaching us that we need to depend on God completely. Amen. This is total dependency on God. This is total trust in God. This is total reliance on God. When you no longer have everything, it means that if those things are not there, you still depend on God. Amen. Job still depended on God when those things are not there. This teaches me that even when he had all those things, Job never depended on those things. Family, I want us to tune ourselves to the mindset of Job of not depending on the things that God has given us. But depend on God. Because if we depend on the things that God has given us, when we lose those things, we are no longer have anything else to depend on. But when we depend on God, even when we have all the things, even when those things are not there, we will still depend on God. So we need to totally depend on God. But when I want to tell you that when I was jogging on Friday, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. And said, you know why? Why I want you to depend on me? <laughs> it's because I have sent you with a message of completely trusting in God. So if I have sent you with a message of completely trusting in God, it means that there is nothing else that you have to depend on. <laughs> but you need to depend on God alone. Hallelujah. Amen. So the message that God has sent you with in this world, God will test you on that very same message. Mm -hmm. he, has, he says, love you. I never even actually came to think of it. That is, is this exactly what I have been sent for? Is this the message that I have been sent with? Because he said, I have sent you with the message of completely trusting in me and nothing else. 
So I'm going to test you on completely trusting in me and trusting in nothing else. So family, we need to trust completely in God. We need to depend completely in God. We need to rely completely on God. Family, your bank account has nothing to do with what God is inviting you to trust in. Who you know has nothing to do with what God is inviting you to trust in him. Family, what you have has nothing to do with what God is inviting you to trust in him. God says, I want total dependence. Eh? You need to totally depend on God. You know, family, if you don't totally depend on God, there are some things, when they are not going right, you will run somewhere to someone. Eh? Because you don't totally trust in God. There are some things that when things are not going the way you expect them, you will quickly run to them to try and solve the situations you are coming across. But God says, in everything, you need to completely trust in me. You need to totally rely on me. Hallelujah. So, family, this is after Job has said, I know my Redeemer lives. <laughs> you know this man when he said, I know my Redeemer lives? Nothing of what he had and what he lost was 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 even showing a sign that it will be redeemed. Huh? Nothing in everything that he had lost was beginning to come back. But Job says, I know my Redeemer lives. I know, I know, I know, I know. Family, there is something that you need to know. Because if you do not know, you will never know. Amen. So what is to know? To know is it is to believe. He is saying, I believe that my Redeemer lives. That is John. He says, I don't doubt that the one who will bring back everything that I have lost still lives. Even if I have lost everything, it does not mean that God is no more. Hallelujah. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives. His Redeemer lives. His Redeemer lives. You need to know that your Redeemer lives. That is total dependence. Trust and reliance on God. So no one will stop God from doing what he wants. Remember, I've got good news for you this morning. No one will stop God from doing what he wants. Because no one can oppose God and no one can stop him from doing what he wants. God will fulfill all the plans that he has for you. And that is just one of many more plans that he has for you. No one will stop God from doing what he wants. It does not matter what they say, they will not stop God from doing what he wants. It does not matter what they do, they will not stop God from doing what God wants to do. It does not matter how fast, how strong, how wise, how skillful they may be. No one will stop God from doing what God wants to do. It does not matter how rich they may be, how qualified, it doesn't matter how popular, how influential, or how evil they may be. No one will stop God from doing what God wants to do. Family, I want you to know that it does not matter the age, the color, it does not matter the fitness, the capability, the height. It does not matter. No one will stop God from doing what God wants to do. God will make it happen. Job says God will fulfill the plans that he has for my life. And that is just one of many more. Job is saying this and he is not saying that God might fulfill the plans that he has for my life. He says God will fulfill the plans. He's not saying maybe. He is saying God will certainly fulfill the plans that he has for his life. So Job says God will. Job is sure. Job is certain. Job is convinced. Job believes that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for his life. Job knows that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for his life. Do you know that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for his life? No one is responding. Do you know Amen. that God will fulfill all the plans that he has for your life. Yeah. God will fulfill all the plans that he has for your life. And that is just one of many more plans that God has for you. So God will fulfill all the plans that he has for your life. God has a plan for you. The plan to redeem you, to restore you. He has a plan to bless you. He has a plan to increase you. He has a plan to multiply 
multiply you. He has a plan to grow you. He has a plan to advance you. God has a plan to move you from nothing to something. God has a plan for you to be employed. He has a plan for you to be married. He has a plan to heal you. God has a plan to do something good in your life. God has a plan for you. Family, I want you to know that after God was able to declare this concerning his God, you know what God did in Job's life? God restored all Job's wealth. He restored all of Job's health. God restored all of Job's children and he even gave him double of everything that he has lost. So God gave him more than what he has lost. Why? Because when Job was going through something, Job never changed his language towards God. Job, when he was suffering, he says, I know that my redeemer lives. Before there's even a sign that some of those things are beginning to come back. Job says, my redeemer lives. He says, the one who will restore my life, he is alive. He is not dead because I have lost everything. He still says, my God is powerful. When he has lost everything, Job still says, God will fulfill all the plans that he has for my life. Even when he has lost everything. After Job has said all these positive things about God, Job was able to restore more than what Job has lost in his life. So remember, when we go through, it is not time to change our language towards God. We must still remain loyal to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So remember, we must still remain loyal to God. We must not change our focus from God because we are going through something. No, we must still remain focused on God even when we are going through something. So I, mean, I want you to know that what you are going through will not last forever. But your God will last forever. Amen. So God has the ability to change the situation that you are facing today. So I mean, we must not change our focus from God because of what we are facing. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we make this confession together and say, I will not change my focus on God. I will not change my focus on God. You know, family, nowadays, the way that people are drifting from God just by misplacing a rubber and a pencil, a person automatically changes their loyalty from God. Just by misplacing a rubber and a pencil, the loyalty from God to God towards God nowadays is very scarce. Let's to speak about the bigger things, which are the main reason why others are saying that this is why we no longer have faith in God. So, family, I want you to stay focused on God no matter what happens in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, I want to tell you a little bit about the plans that God has for you. So, God has a plan for your life and God will fulfill that plan for your life. It does not matter what happened. The Bible says in this popular passage of scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse number 11, I will read in the message version. My Bible says, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. You see, when Job says, I know my intimate needs, Job was demonstrating his hope in God. Amen. What he is hoping for. Yeah. Didn't God give him the future that he was hoping for? He says, I know that God will bring back all my wealth. God brought the wealth more than what he had before. Amen. Because God says, I know what I am doing. Because most of the time, when we come across challenges in life, we think like God does not know what he's doing. God knows what he is doing. He says he has a plan for you and he will fulfill it. The plan to take care of you and not to abandon you. The plan to give you the future that you hope for. So family, this is, a, this is one of the perfect stories of redemption of Israel. So God was saying after the 70 years of Babylon are over, I will come and fulfill the plan of taking you back to Jerusalem. When the 70 years of Babylon are over, 70 years they have been going through challenges. Where were they? They were in Babylon, the place of captivity. But when they were there, did it not seem like it's like God has forgotten them? Because
Because when you go through family, I want to tell you, you always think like uh, you are on your own. Yeah. But God says, my plan is not to abandon you, but to take care of you. Amen. God will fulfill the plans that he has for your life. And that is just one of many more plans that he has for you. This story of redemption, it reminds me another story of redemption. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, do you know how long they were in Egypt for? They were in Egypt for 430 years. When they were there, it seems like God has forgotten them. So people, I want you to know, almost four generations, they were locked out in Egypt. One generation stayed there. It gave birth to another generation. Another generation came. Until the fourth generation, they were in Egypt. Others, since God has promised, they did not see the promise. Oh, but they had faith in God. Yes. They did not drop their faith in God because of the oppression they were going through in Egypt. Do you know that Egypt it is where we are today? Whatever you go through, it does not mean that God has abandoned you. No, God has a plan. He says, my plan is not to hurt you. Yeah. My plan is not to harm you. But my plan is to take care of you. Yeah. My plan it is a good plan. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Oh, these thoughts, they are of peace and not evil. I think, yeah. when I think of you, I think of peace. Yeah. When I think of you, I think of well, good well-being. When I think of you, I think of health. When I think of you, I think of promotion. When I think of you, I think of employment. When I think of you, I think of giving you. When I think of you, I think of uplifting you. When I think of you, I want to multiply you. This is the plan that God has for you. God has no plan to subtract you. God has no plan to take away from you. God has a plan to lift you. God has a plan to bless you. God has a plan to grow you. God, the thing, the thoughts that I think towards you, they are good and they are not evil. Let me tell you, God is preoccupied about what next he can do in your life. And he's not planning any evil thing. He's not planning any hateful thing. He's not planning to disappoint you. He's not planning to, 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 to crush you. He's not planning to cause you any pain. Let me tell you, when Jesus was going to the cross, family, I want you to know that was the plan that God had for him. But the plan was not to hurt him. The plan was not to pierce him. The plan was not to break his bow. Oh, the plan was redemption of you, the human race. So, people, I want you to know that was the path that Jesus had to go. That's why Jesus, when he was at the cross, he got to a point of saying, Eli, Eli. Lava Samakata, our Father, 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 why have you forsaken me? Family, I want you to know that Jesus went through so much pain to an extent that he said, Father, it seems like I am alone. You know why he was he alone? He was alone because of the sin of the world that he was carrying. Why? Because God cannot live in sin. Why? Because God is holy. The moment that Jesus carried the sin of the world, the Spirit of the Lord departed. That's why Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakata, why have you for, how, why have you forsaken me? But Jesus knew that it is because of the sin. But that sin that he was carrying, that was the only way that we can be redeemed by his blood. Hallelujah. Amen. So family, God will fulfill all the plans that he has for your life. Amen. Sometimes in the process of fulfilling those plans, you will go through challenges. When you go through challenges, it does not mean that God has one day thought of evil towards your life. No, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. These thoughts, they are of peace. These thoughts are good. They are not evil, not to hurt you and not to harm you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, family, the plan that God has for you it is to prosper you. Amen. That is the plan that God has for you, to bring you prosperity and not disaster. He plans welfare for you. He plans well-being for you. God wants only the best for you. So I want you to know that the plans that God has for you, it is not to harm you, but it is to prosper you. That is the plan that God has for you. He has planned to give you hope and a good future. That is the story of redemption. Family, it is the story to give us hope and a good future. The redemption that God has planned for each and every one of us. It is to give us hope 
and a good future. So family, with that said, can we close our eyes and focus on the cross of Jesus? Heavenly loving Father, we want to thank you this morning. Father, because of this perfect story of redemption, that even when Job went through what he went through, Father, he never changed trusting in you. He remained loyal to you. He still trusted you. He totally depended on you. Even after he lost everything, but he still goes and says that I know that God does not change. He says no one can oppose you. He says that no one can stop you from doing what you want to do. He continues and says you will fulfill the plan that he has, you have for his life. And that is just one of many more plans that he has. Father, I want to thank you that the plans that you had for Job, they are plans of good and not evil. They were plans to prosper him and not to hurt him or harm him. They were not plans of big disasters in his life. But Father, when he went through disaster, Father, he was able to still trust in you, rely on you, depend on you. Father, even when we go through what we go through, even now during the global pandemic, Father, where we have lost relatives, our loved ones, but Father, we still remain loyal to you. We still trust in you. We still depend on you because we know that the plan that you have for us, it is not of the global pandemic, but the plan that you have for us is to heal us. The plan that you have for us, it is good. But when we go through this valley of the shadow of death, Father, we will not fear because we know that you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Father, we want to thank you this morning that you will never hurt us and you don't have any plan to hurt anyone or to harm anyone. You don't have any disastrous plan. But Father, your, your mind is preoccupied by doing good in our lives. Father, I pray that you will increase us. You will multiply us. You will grow us. You will advance us. You will heal us. Your plan is to bless us. Father, your plan is to multiply us. Father, your plan, Father, is to take us from nothing to something. Father, your plan, it is to do good in our life. Father, I want to thank you for the thoughts that you think towards us. Father, the thoughts that you think towards us, Father, are of peace. They are of good. They are not of evil or disaster. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for answered prayers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world Come on. That he gave his only son And whosoever believes will not perish They shall have eternal life We believe in God I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to God alone. For His love has salvaged.